Hey everybody and welcome back to Bigfoot Cooking where today we're making smoked ribs. Now the plan was to actually do them outside on the smoker, but the weather today, for lack of a better word, sucks. We got nothing but rain, fog, mist, and honestly, I don't wanna deal with being out there getting my smoker rained on. So we're gonna cheat. We're actually gonna make these ribs in about an hour using the Instant Pot or Insta Pot, however you wanna say it. But literally within about an hour, we can take these pork ribs from raw, just sitting there, to fall off the bone tender and absolutely awesomely delicious. Now, of course for sides, we're gonna throw in some baked beans and we're gonna doctor up some suddenly salad. Oh yeah, we're throwing the whole meal deal at you. So let's get started by, well, let's prep the ribs first since that's gotta go in the, in, the, in the Instant Pot. So we got our whole rack of pork ribs out, ready to go. But are they? Heck no, they're not. They need some seasonings. They need some flavor. They need a little taste in the, in the mouth. You know what I mean? So we're going to start out. I've already dried this off, got rid of all the extra moisture that's on it. We're going to take mustard. I know it sounds kind of weird, right? Mustard, barbecue, but oh, it's the way to go. We're going to take mustard. We're going to coat this thing all the way from one end to the other, front and back, top and bottom, left and right. That will then give the apple rub a little something to bite onto. So that way we can add the flavor and we can, we can get it going. Now we're gonna make half of this a hot, hot and the other half just a very plain smoke flavor because while I like my food a little bit spicy, not everyone in the household wants to just oh, be on fire for the good food. So we're gonna prep this in a very simple flavorful way. But later on, you're gonna see how to make it hot for half the folk. Now that we've got all the flavor you could want on this thing, we're going to let this sit to the side and get the Instant Pot ready. We're going to go ahead and put the liquids in it. Let this marinate for a moment. Let's do a little swap around, shall we? So let's get our Instant Pot ready for our rainy day smoke. Now, we're going to start out, we're going to use about a teaspoon of Instant Smoke, Hot Smoke, what do they call it? Oh, Liquid Smoke, my bad. We're going to use about a teaspoon of Liquid Smoke. You don't want to use too, too much of it because it, while that doesn't really look like a lot, it actually has a very powerful flavor to it, especially when you combine it with a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Those two things together, oh, this is gonna be awesome. Now, from here, the question is, what kind of liquid do you wanna put in there? You could put, you could use apple juice if you wanted or some other thing, but in this case, I'm gonna use bone broth. Now, you could use chicken broth as well, but in this case, the bone broth I got, I actually have a recipe, if you'll check out this little link here when you're done watching this one, where I make bone broth from scratch and we're using ostrich bones with that. Yeah, not something you find everywhere, but the ostrich bones actually have a really good flavor. Eh, nothing like chicken, so don't go, oh, does it taste like chicken? Nope, doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes like ostrich. That's why you should try ostrich, good stuff. So we're gonna add ourselves about a, what's that, about a cup or so of, a, or a pint, yeah pint of uh, bone broth here. We'll set that in there. And now for the tricky part, getting your hands dirty and getting the meat in there. Personally, for my preference, I like to set everything where the bones stick to the bottom of it and the meat sticks to the top and then roll it out in such a way so that when you put it in, you've got your vent valves right here on the Instant Pot and you wanna make sure that your vents don't have a big piece of meat up against it. Otherwise it can mess up the pressure release and the cooking and what have you. So let's wrap some meat and stick it in there. Now again, like I say, where all the bones are, we're gonna stick that down in the bottom because you know, when you got that nice fall off the bone cooking, the meat usually pulls back from that part. And so we're gonna set it in there in that way. We're gonna have to fight it a little bit because these bones are a little bit big. And as usual, let me wash my hands before we get the second part going. Okay, got the hands clean. Now again, let's talk about position of the meat because like I said, you want the vents back here to be like where the gap is. That way nothing gets in the way. You can just set this guy down and listen to the song of its people, lock it in. You've always got audible confirmation of what's going on, see? Woo. Ah. It sings its happy song. So let's go ahead and set this guy. Now we're gonna cook this for 30 minutes 
That's a little bit longer than what you really need. About 25 to 27 usually will get you right where you want. But 30 minutes, this stuff is literally gonna be fall off the bone. I'm hoping I can actually pull it back out of here for the broiling part. So let's get this started. Now that this thing is starting to heat up, the other thing, because how, what good is a pressure cooker without putting it under pressure? Back here is the valve where you just flip it and that changes it from venting to sealing. Very important, otherwise you're just kinda, you're boiling water and making hot meat. No, 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 we want these things tender. So the sealing, the pressure cooking, that's what we're after. It'll do the, uh, the count up and then once it's done with its count up, it'll do the countdown and then after 10 minutes, we'll actually flip this back open and watch it steam. Now, while our ribs are kind of working on their magic, we're gonna go ahead and whip out some Suddenly Salad, but we're actually gonna strip quite a, we're, we're gonna do some changing to it. We're gonna make it, at least in my opinion, we're gonna make it better. Now, when you open it up, instead of getting just the flavor pack and the pasta, we're not gonna use the flavor pack. We're just sticking with the pasta. I kind of want those peas and carrots in there. Just, it gives it a little something more and who knows, maybe there's some flavor in the pasta. I don't know. We've got a bunch of it around here, so we're gonna use it and we're gonna supercharge it. So let's get this started. We're gonna start out, we're gonna light our pot cause you know, well, water doesn't boil unless you got it under heat. Once it's boiling, we're gonna add two packs of the pasta to it, cook that up, and then ooh, time for some custom flavors. All right, got us some good boiling water and just for like side information, I took the box and dumped it out of everything, you know, cause I'm making two into one. And I found out something kind of neat. If you dump both packs, two packs will actually fit into one box as far as the, uh, the shells quantity. Thought that was kind of neat as you're purchasing things on the shelf. The fact that this right here, that's two boxes. Now we stir, make sure things don't stick to the bottom when you put it in, because they do have a tendency to do that. And also make sure you put yourself a good healthy pinch of salt in your water. It'll help with some of the flavoring. So just, just trust me on this, it works out really well. We'll let this go for a few minutes till it gets the old al dente, as they say. In other words, where it's, uh, it's the flavor and texture that you like, not mushy, not hard, but just right. And then we'll put in the rest of the ingredients. All right. Noodles are done. Everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and get these guys out of the pot, put them into a drain, and whoo, get with some of the adding flavors. Okay, we have our water drained out of here. Now, time to add some of the flavor. We're gonna start out, again, instead of the, the seasoning packet that came with it, because we're gonna use that for chicken later on, we're adding a cup of Italian dressing. We're gonna use this instead of mayonnaise, but also I've got a few more things to kick it up a notch. We're adding bacon, oh yes. Went ahead and made up a little bit of bacon and we're actually taking some pepperonis. Now you can get those, I don't know if you've seen them, they're little bitty pepperonis. I mean, they're like a three quarters of an inch. Oh, they're so good. But what we did here, we actually just sliced up the pepperonis into smaller pieces. Believe it or not, they taste the same. We're gonna go ahead and mix this in. And once we get a good mix on this, I'm actually gonna add about a teaspoon of ranch powder. That way between the Italian seasoning, the ranch powder, and a couple of pieces of meat, ooh, this makes a great side for ribs. We'll get this stirred up, set it off to the side, let it cool down a little bit. Now that our semi-homemade suddenly salad has been situated, sir, it is time to pay attention to the ribs that we have been waiting on. Now, we've got it, it's done cooking, it's done all its magic there, and what you see on the counter is the holdover time. So once it reaches the peak and holds it there for, in our case, 30 minutes, it, it, it's done with that. And so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do partially natural release, I guess you'd say. We've let it sit here for 10 minutes and kind of that's taking the, the super edge off of it to where it's cooled down a little bit. If we sat here and let it go and go, eventually it would let, it would cool down enough to let all the pressure out of it but that's not what we're after. We've given it 10 minutes of cool down time. Now it's time to go from natural release to what is it called? Forced release. I don't know. We're going to open the valve. We're going to make all kinds of steam come out. It's pretty cool. All you got to do is take this guy here, flip it over and stand back. Oh, 
She's a geyser. And she's hot. Don't stick your face here. You might take a little bit of skin off. Yeah, I know the steam smells good, but don't sniff it directly. You will burn the hair right out your nostrils. Now what you're looking for before you can even open this thing, you got this little guy right here. It's kind of the safety valve. It's staying up to prevent you from turning it. So once we have enough pressure let off of it, we can then open the pot and get into it. But if there was a way to open it right now, oh, it'd be like a little mini explosion. You don't want that in your kitchen. You don't want that to mess up your food. So just a few more minutes, whoop, the thing will pop down and we'll be ready to see what's inside. There you go. The whatchamanut has fell into the thingamaboozle. But even though you can open it right now, I'm still gonna give it just maybe 30 seconds or so. I'm not in a big rush and I would rather let this thing get calm before we, before we mess up its happy home. All right, we got enough time. Let's see what's inside. Sing to me. Oh, love that sound. Woo. Look at that steaming bunch of goodness. Now, from here, well, it's time to transfer it out. And for that, we're gonna need the help of some tongs. Cause this baby, she hot. Let's see, we'll grab it from each side of it. Try to ease this guy out of here. Lay it down gently. Tell it to take a little nap. Ooh. Yes, 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 perfection indeed. Now, let's add a little barbecue sauce. Actually, before we put the sauce on it, let me show, let me show y'all a magic trick. We're gonna grab this guy right here and just bloop. Oh, no meat, no nothing. That's what you wanted, right? Fall off the bone. You couldn't pick this thing up with a single bone here. Mm. Now, for the barbecue sauce, we're gonna use, oh yeah, Sweet Baby Ray's. I mean, I guess there's another company out there that sells barbecue sauce, but I don't know what it is. We're gonna put a nice little lathering of it on here. Now, one of the little things you run into with the Instapot, as you see, we got a little bit of curl up right here because, well, you're wrapping it in a circle to put it in the pot. We're just gonna have to deal with it. I hate to say, I mean, you could take a knife, cut it and lay it down, but is it gonna change anything in the way it tastes? Nah, not a bit. Now you see we've got the barbecue sauce on here. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna spread this over here real nice because while everything is tender and delicious and everything, it doesn't have that, that little bit of glaze that you want, that little crispy crunchy bit per se. You know, the caramelization. So let's get this thing nice and coated up with some sugary sweet barbecue sauce. We will put it in the oven for, oh, just a few minutes and put it on, um, put it on broil. So that way the flame, the flame kisses it, makes it whoo, delicious. And then we'll see what we got. Also at this point, because like I said, we have different, different flavor palettes in this house. I think I'm going to go with the thicker side, which is another reason why I pulled that rib out of it. Not because I'm Adam, but because I want a clear definition on which side's gonna be the hot side and which side's gonna be the flavor side. So now from the rib over, I'm just gonna drizzle some of Nate's hot honey on here. Not too much yet, just a little bit. Because the rest of it will come on our second coating of barbecue sauce. And we're gonna put some of this sriracha powder on here. Now, I may pay the piper for this one because this is a, a new product. I hadn't seen it before. So for, for those, of, uh, those of you who are the hot connoisseur, forgive me if I tread lightly here because I don't wanna blow my taste buds back to Tennessee. So we're gonna put just, a, just enough to barely see it. Well, I wanna put a little more than that. Come on now, there we go. All right, just a little something. Now let's set this big old delicious thing in the oven under broil, shall we? We started the broiler, got it going for a couple minutes, so now the oven is kind of warmed up and ready to go. Oh, it's time to slide this bad boy in here. 
we'll just ease it right on in for home plate. Oh, doesn't fit that way, do it. This is called adjusting on the fly. We'll see you in, we'll just say roughly five minutes. Honestly, take a look at it because every oven's gonna do a little bit different. You don't wanna burn it, but you do wanna have a nice little, you just want the, the sugars to set. So I'm gonna say five minutes, but your oven may vary. In that time though, let's work on the beans. Now for this one, we're starting out simple. We're using canned beans, but we're gonna do something y'all may not have seen. We're gonna use a old school manual can opener. That's right. For some of you folks, this may be a teaching class. Now, we're gonna start out by putting the sharp part right here on the top edge, taking the bottom part, squeeze it together. You should hear that satisfying sound. Oh yeah. And then turn the handle. And it's gonna bring it round and round. Now, when you get almost all the way around, it's gonna start tipping that front edge up. You can put your finger right there and catch it. Be careful though, you might cut yourself if you, uh, if you get stupid. And there you have it, an open can of beans. Now, from here, why we just pour it into the pot. Add a little heat. And then, once it starts to warm up, oh, we enhance the flavor. Ooh, beans. We're just gonna add us a, a little squirt of the good stuff. Ooh, not too much. Like I say, you got barbecue on the ribs. This is just to give you a little extra something, something. And of course, everything. Everything? Everything is better with bacon. So we're gonna get us a, a little crumble handful here. We're just gonna stir this in. Oh. We're gonna keep this on low because it ain't been five minutes yet. Our ribs are still in there, but we got it right delicious looking. We'll let that, let them flavors get a little happy with each other and check on the ribs, shall we? Now don't do this in the microwave. I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting, but you cannot do proper beans in a microwave. You must apply heat. Gas is preferred, but if you have to go electric, it's totally acceptable. Beans are, there's a heritage with beans. There's a history. There's a whole life of people eating beans. Matter of fact, there's a bean scene in some favorite movie that, well, it's just amazing. They're funny. Y'all ought to check it out. Ribs are ready. Ooh, take a look at that. Oh, hungry? You are now. Let's get them out. Oh yeah. Look at there. Caramelization, everything is set up nicely. I think we're good with a broil, sir. You can stop. Now, let's get it on the other side and put a little more sauce and a little more heat on it. Mm, look at that. Oh, this just says eat me, but I wanna put a little more barbecue sauce on it. Do you have to? Oh no, it's ready right now. I'm not ready. I want a little bit more. We got a few spots here that are just a touch thin and you know, you know how it is. You gotta have flavor with everything. Now, again, because we have different taste palettes in this house, I have to do things a certain way. So we're gonna start by laying this out on the, the, the calmer side because I don't want to mix my sriracha sauce up with my hot, hot. So we got them boys looking good there. All right, let's smooth this in some right over here. That way we got a, got, got messy fingers. That's, that's really all you're going to get out of this right here is some messy fingers. But oh, you're going to be happy with your messy fingers. Now here's where I'm going to put a little more of that hot honey because not only do you get the sweet, you get the heat. See. Different heats have different ways they react with you. This, this is like a front heat. So as soon as you bite into it, boom, you got that flame. Now, the sriracha right here, that's back heat. That right there affects the back of your mouth a little more. That's the heat you carry with you for a few minutes that say, whoo, I ate something. So 
We're gonna let this now rest for about five minutes, get itself where it's oh so happy, and then we gonna eat. And there you have it. Woo, dinner for a king, mind you. Now, like I say, over here, we got the not so spicy. I had to separate them with plates, so that way, you know, people didn't get confused. Don't wanna burn the taste buds of those who just ain't got the palate for it. And over here, ooh, the sweet, the heat on the meat. Oh yeah. Plus a little at home custom suddenly salad and our upgraded beans. Ooh, nothing like bacon to make one happy, right? Now, let's see what we got. Because again, I know about Nate's hot honey. The sriracha, it's got my curiosity up. Let's see what we got with this here. This, this one rib that just decided to jump off the plate and say, yep, me first. Daggum. I can't even make the bone stay on it to finish the bite. Mm. You know, this is good. This is really good. I do know next time I'm gonna put a little more sriracha on it than this. Like I say, the first time you try something, you never know if it's gonna bake your noodle or if it's just gonna add the flavor. And in this case, it added the flavor. I think even the lightweight might handle it. Or I could be on the edge. We're gonna find out as we eat this whole rack. So until it's gone, Remember, oh, this is the way to do it when you got cloudy, rainy days, no smoke ring, but smoke flavor. And two, Bigfoot is real. And he gonna really eat this thing. Stand by. Oh yeah. Upgraded the sriracha level a little, put a little powder coating on it. Mm. Man, that is gonna be one of my one of my kitchen staples here. Ho, 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 ho. Give me some more.